What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Monday. It is a great Monday, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening to this, maybe you're on your way to work. Maybe it's after work and you're mm. winding down. Maybe you're trying to fall asleep, so we're speaking <laughs> softly for you. Or, or maybe, trying to wake up. Or you're yeah. trying to wake up and you're getting ready to go out, so we're trying to pump you up. <laughs> Either way, it's a great Monday. It's a great week. Francesca, mm. how are mm-hmm. we doing? Francesca Noel. <laughs> we're doing well <laughs> i wanted to rhyme there but, yeah you know noel well, well yeah. yeah nailed it um <laughs> great week we're traveling this week we're going to LA. yeah, yeah well, if you were if you weren't awake before you're awake now um we got some cool things lined up with mtv out there we're also gonna be at the barstool classic on thursday so if you're if you're golfing, True. if you know someone that's golfing in it, we'll be there. I need a cute golf outfit. I did buy a cute golf dress. And I, you know what? You Can need- you show me it when we're done with this? Yes. I also think that I might look ridiculous, you know, because we're not actually golfing. No, but that's okay. Yeah. We got and the, I we just feel like golf outfit. I feel like everyone from Barcel who goes, who's, you know, working the event and is there organizing are going to be like in normal clothes. <laughs> I'm just gonna like show is, up in is my there a tennis dress, dress. Is there a dress code? Uh, yeah, it's a. Oh, I didn't even think about this shit. Country I don't know what club, I'm like wear. you can't show up in I jeans. Know, I know. Oh fuck! What do I even wear? <laughs> you do gotta you, go uh, shopping. You've got khakis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gotta. Yeah. You gotta take a trip while no, no, you're in like, LA and go like shopping. Sh- like you need like a collared shirt, probably right. Or no, probably. Or I I would you need like a I would suggest like a golf polo and like khakis. I hate that. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, yeah, but honestly, that's thinking, what's just the rules. <laughs> thinking about seeing Noah in that type of outfit's making me uncomfortable. I've, I've had to. I I I, I don't think I've ever seen Noah truly not in a t-shirt or a sweatshirt. No, we saw him in a tux at the People's Choice Awards. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was weird. Tux, <laughs> that, that, that was weird. That was weird. <laughs> Can we also talk about quickly how much Noah gets? gassed up on your tiktok like i i i knew that it was happening but i saturday i was like doing nothing i'm in bed scrolling in the morning and i was looking at your tiktoks one because i didn't know you pranked me again and i did, did. <laughs> and you did and two so i just started scrolling i was watching the one where you were complimenting people in the office and you did noah's like noah was in it for five seconds and I go to look at the comments, and every comment is like, so we all agree, we we all simp for Noah. And I'm like, what is happening? And can I say that these comments have thousands of likes? So it's many. It's not even it's like not they're just like, one. They're it, like every other comment every is about Every comment Noah. is about Noah, and it's not even like, like the TikTok went viral. Yeah. It has you gotta almost, put Noah back it has in hiding. All, yeah, <laughs> it has, no, no, I'm using Noah for clout now. Forget Hank. Forget Noah's Hank. in the mix. Noah, I, I almost got a million views on that and yeah. all the comments <laughs> are about Noah. Thousands of likes. Every comment. It's insane. It's hilarious. Follow Chicks in the Office on TikTok this week because I'm going to be posting content yeah. from there, from LA and I'm going to include Noah a lot and follow Get my Get ready, folks. Butt. You really should because they're, they're they, probably going to try to film me when I'm like driving. Probably. And like, well, throwback. If you've been listening to the show for a while, if you're a day one listener, then you know the first time we ever took a trip to LA together, Noah drives, obviously, because Fran and I aren't going to do that. We need a driver. And so that's Noah. And yeah. I'm always like, you want to drive? Multiple like, near oh, death experiences. Multiple. There was one. People where get I was like, really. Okay. Listen. Okay. Like, I drove through an intersection and like we almost all died. <laughs> Yes. People get really upset when we rag on Noah. Like, yeah. I see that. People will comment. And they'll message us and be like, I just, you guys are so mean to Noah. And I'm like, come on. Banter, people. Yeah, it's banter. It also, you do realize we're two girls and a guy who are together constantly. 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 Like, we're We gonna, have a sibling dynamic. We can't be nice to each other all the time. Fran and I <laughs> or both. <ever. laughs> th- this is actually, Fran and I both. Uh, or ever? How about I'm how about joking, when we? I'm joking. How about I'm when so we, nice to know. I buy yeah. coffee like every day. And now. I was just it's about to say, crazy. how about uh, how about you know our first nice gift we bought for you? You lost. Uh, I got I, that no, shit I still, engraved. Yeah. I still have faith that I'm gonna find it. Yeah, got him AirPods, engraved him. He lost them. Yeah, I'm we, not buying new ones because I think that I'll find okay. them. and that okay. has sentimental value. So. I don't want to just get new AirPods. I hope so. We treat Noah so good behind the scenes, <laughs> but 
<laughs> I will say that Fran and I, our family dynamics, like at home, I'm the youngest sibling. Yeah. Then I have a brother in the middle and then an older sister. We have and then the you same are, thing. Yeah, you, but you are the older sister. We make sister. up our own, our family. Yes. You are the older sister, then yeah. you have a brother in the middle and then a younger sister. Yes. So Noah just takes we, the spot of our, our brother. brother. Yes. <laughs> we just have the exact same family dynamics we have at home on this podcast. Yes. We have a middle brother. I'm the oldest. You're the youngest. Like it just weirdly is exactly how our families are built. <laughs> it's so good. And Noah really is and we're age-wise all Italian. in between us. <laughs> yeah, like, that is true. Like you that are, is the age, like, like you are in actually you. in between us age-wise. It goes me, Noah, Rhea. So yes. it's weirdly very similar. It fits. Yeah. It fits. So I'm really excited for this trip <laughs> because we, we've we talked about this for the past few podcasts. We haven't taken a trip together in a while. So yeah. you guys are going to get some really good stuff this week. I know. I know yeah. some shit's going to happen this week. So we'll be excited to talk about it. Maybe even, you'll maybe even catch us having a drunk podcast this oh, who week knows. <laughs> who knows it's been a while who knows where it's the wind been takes us since like november i would yeah. say the last one was the tyler episode so who knows where the wind blows yep. you might get drunk ria fran and noah potentially potentially and we will document that on tiktok on youtube um you know we're gonna make a vlog so that'll all be really exciting I have something so embarrassing yes. to talk about. Enti- it's entirely yeah. too embarrassing. I wouldn't even be surprised if people turned off this podcast after they hear this. Trust me, I know. I I thought about not even talking about it. Yeah. But I think me and you both decided that it is it, it's so, so far embarrassing gone. that it's funny. Yes. Yeah. We I think so. If this was like five years ago, it'd be like, yeah. okay, no. Yeah. But now it's so far gone that yeah. we could talk about it. I am now, I don't even know how to word this. <laughs> Spit it out. I am now obsessed with The Office. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm about 20 years late. It's, which is also hilarious because we spent all, we like joked about Chugi last episode and it was like, ah, oh, people who wear Dunder Mifflin merch like are Chugi. <laughs> and one episode later, Rhea's like, I'm obsessed with The Office. I'm like, can't I, stop watching it. I don't know what happened. And I'd also like to mention the Chugi thing. Yeah. I'm seeing more and more young people. I'm young. By the way, somebody tweeted that we were old and this yeah. is where I draw the line. I was like, no, no, no. You, I am 23. Very I will young. not be yeah. called old at 23. Wait I'm until I'm at, You're not old. I'm no. not old either, but I act older. Like, Nobody's, I act old. Nobody <laughs> at what age can you be called old? I think when you I reach think, your, oh. like, your 40s or your yeah, 50s. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. I, I think 20s and 30s, yeah. you're young. I, I hate this well, whole... Well, in, the, in like, life, and, you're young. And, and I'm like, just joking about, like, the trends on TikTok are 17-year-olds. Like, I can't relate to that at all. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you're 17, you can be like, oh, Realistically, I feel quote feel old compared to that but i also know that i'm not old. exactly and somebody tweeted that like oh you know welcome to being old and i was like this is not happening i'm 23 i will refuse to be called old until i'm at least 25 which was a joke because i don't think 25 is old like yeah. i said i think 20s and 30s yes. you're young we're all young everybody yeah but i noticed that a lot of young people were like i've never heard chuggy before and i was like maybe chuggy is chuggy yeah <laughs> just saying but i I started watching The Office from the beginning. Well, I skipped season one. Yeah. Because everyone says to skip season one. Yeah, it's they says, I've been worth it. And so I finished season two like and, and, and three this weekend. Yeah. I watched both season two and three in one weekend. Sickening, of it's course. How many episodes? In it's like just, and just season. to clarify, she never watched, you never, you've seen episodes, but you never binged The Office before like start to finish. Yeah, I never binged it start to finish. I've obviously not seen episodes. I know the characters, right. names. It's also hilarious that you're them. doing this after it left Netflix. <laughs> I doubt like everyone cried about it leaving Netflix. I had they to download Peacock. Yeah. I now pay for Peacock monthly yes. so that I could watch The Office 2,000 years yeah. late. It's been I, on Netflix for years. It was I, on Netflix for so long. I could have watched it during during quarantine yeah. and I chose not to. I watched Parks and Rec. Yeah. For some reason, it was something about everybody loving it and being so obsessed with it that I was like, I can't even get into this. I'm yeah. so far gone. But something got into me where I just thought, I need to watch this show, huh? And yeah. I was sobbing my eyes out at Jim and Pam. And I felt like such a fucking loser because I'm so far behind. 
But I will say that, you know, Jim and Pam are, are really cute. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear this. They know this already. They know all of this. But I will say this. It's really funny. I never understood the hype behind John Krasinski. Yeah. I never understood That's it. That's true. Anytime I talked about him and Emily Blunt, you're like, ah, whatever. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. like Emily Blunt better than John Krasinski. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what's yeah. with John Krasinski? Why, why do people love yeah. him? Oh, my God. Yeah. He's so cute. <laughs> He's it's so just, cute as Jim. It's just hilarious that you are so late to so a, late. an era of like pop culture and its show that is so iconic that people will obviously talk about for decades and decades to come. But now you'll be able to to jump in that conversation. Yes. Which well, is funny. Like I'm I'm looking forward to this would actually be a funny TikTok idea. Of you just like go around to people in the office and be like <laughs> in our office and like just bring up scenes from the office and be like, hey, do you remember when uh, <laughs> yeah. and everyone will be like, yeah, like, why the fuck are you talking to me about this? <laughs> it's really good. I was thinking I was workshopping one of my what head. What do you think like, about Roy? Like, yeah, just, like, yeah. Just like throw shit out there. And yeah, like, I was I was thinking about that in my head being like, guys, have you seen this show? Yeah. Like Jim and Pam are yeah. so cute. I, I just I'm so late to it. I haven't even tweeted about it because I think it's something we should keep inside the podcast the chicks in the office listeners you guys i'm trusting circle you of trust. circle of trust yeah it's it's great i can't look away i've like no. I, I watched it i don't want you to episodes. get shamed for it because i'm so happy that you're doing it yeah better late than ever some say you know well yeah well hank was like maybe it's because it came out when you were really young he was yeah, like i was in true. high school when it came out yeah it came out in 2005 but but i I never, plenty, wa- I never watched it at the beginning. I only though. remember watching when Will Ferrell was... Like, that's the last time I remember watching it while it was live. It's yeah, like but when there Will were Ferrell. plenty... Kind of the end of Steve Carell. Yeah, the end of... Him. There were plenty of shows that came out at that time that I have seen. Right. So there's yeah. really no excuse. Yeah. yeah. It's The Office. Yeah. There's no excuse <laughs> as to why I haven't seen it. I just haven't. So I'm so all funny. in. I... <laughs> Can I sport? Can I talk about things on the show? You, can you, you about literally could talk office. about anything from the office. And if somebody <laughs> comes at you for spoiling the office, then they're worse than you are. I know. I had no idea that Angela and Dwight were a thing. Yeah. I had no idea about any of this. <laughs> I just, it's Wait, all is, new is, to is me. Is BJ Novak on it right now? Yes. yes. Is, was he on from the very, Kelly. Because I know he's like a writer, but. That I knew he's about. Always, yeah, I he's always been on he's it. He's probably like one of my favorite characters. Have you... So wait, what? where are you now? Episode... Season four? Season four, episode one. Oh, oh, oh. You're on one of the best episodes. I know. Well, I fell asleep during it last night, so okay. don't spoil it, please. All right, I won't. I won't. <laughs> don't spoil The Office. Is this one... Is this one Karen finally gets the fuck out of there? Because no, I'm no, so it, sick of is, Karen. This is the one... Um, the beginning of season four is when Meredith gets hit, get hit, gets hit by the car. Oh my God, Meredith. It's, it's fantastic. It's, Every character. That, it might be one, one, up there as one of my favorite episodes of the show. Every character is so funny in their own way, yeah. obviously. <laughs> but <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It's I can't so even keep ridiculous. talking about this. I can't. I can't even listen to it anymore. Every character is just so unique. Like They're all just so funny. and. <laughs> I gotta shut up. I'm done. (laughs) But I will say, Karen is so boring, and of course her name is Karen, and... Yeah. Ugh. Like, her and Jim just do not have the same chemistry that Pam and Jim do. That's all I'll say. I'll end it there. Man, I'm I'm excited for you to get to, like... The thing is, now, I like, I don't want to spoil anything for you. (laughs) No, it's okay. You get spoiled. I know know what happens. I know Michael leaves. I know Jim and Pam end up together. This is all just, you know common sense here for their just for sentimental values their their wedding episode is also one of the best ones too oh my god i'm not oh, prepared forever. yeah i'm really not prepared <laughs> i'm so late it's so, disgusting it's just hilarious it's really it's really gross there's yep. one more thing i want to talk Wait, about what do you think intro? it has on Rotten tomatoes just because oh my about god it. the office yeah as a show yeah oh it's got to be like 92 96 81 oh that's oh, lower than i thought interesting Maybe some, maybe the older seasons brought it down a little bit. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you think the older seasons? Oh, the ones no, later. Like the, yeah, I meant, I meant the like when, when after Steve Carell leaves. After yeah. Steve Carell leaves, it's just what not was the it? same. It was only one season, right? Like, how long did they keep doing it? Three or four seasons three, after. Yeah, really? yeah, I think maybe three seasons. Let me tell you that Michael Scott. <laughs> <laughs> He's something else, huh? He really pretty is. Pretty funny. He really is pretty, pretty funny. funny. He is what you... <laughs> lift, up, lift up to expectations. <laughs> you know, everybody says, that guy, real jokester. It's one of those things that you just know 
you know it's good because everybody loves it, but at the same time, you're like, is it as good as everyone says? It is. <laughs> it is. It definitely is. Fern, don't you say that you like Parks and Rec more or no? Um, no, I, they're they're up there for me personally. I do enjoy turning on an episode of Parks and Rec in certain situations more than I do The Office. You're just afraid to say office, you like Parks and Rec more. No, that was no, a no. nicer way to no, say that you no, like the it, The Office. I think has standalone funnier episodes. Like there are episodes where I'm peeing my pants laughing at The Office. I have a deeper love and connection to the characters on Parks and Rec more. So like I love watching Parks and Rec just as my comfort show, but I can definitely acknowledge that like there are hilarious episodes of The Office. Some people are very torn on that. Oh, I understand that. They're, I get, I mean, they're the similar kind of vibes, right? It's like an office environment and a bunch of like misfit characters all (laughs) thrown together. After watching both or seeing both of them kind i didn't finish the office yet yeah i like the office better yeah i am i, I think I a think lot Parks of people and Rec feel is that great way. yeah but i i like the yeah. office better yeah well now that we've had that discussion from 2006 yeah <laughs> so it's a brief time machine we're back wow. we're back parks and rec has a 93 on Rotten tomatoes interesting well, parks and rec is it's just hard because they're I'm there you can't say like oh my god well Parks and Rec is like the writing is just amazing because it is on the office too like it's you know they're both they're both great I think yeah they are funny stuff funny stuff funny shall stuff. we come back to this to 2021 <laughs> yes we shall we shall okay. enter 2021 we're here one more thing about the trip before we get into the topics yeah so you had told me you joked around with me and you were like, if I don't see you in a full Sharpay Evans right, outfit, I really wanted you to wear a full I'm going to be upset. Evans, yeah. And so I did get a dress that looked similar to that. Okay. I can't wear it. <laughs> I can't wear it. Yeah. Is it an ass situation? First of all, ass cheeks are out. Yeah. But besides that, I can't embarrass myself like that. I can't. I feel like everyone would be like, this girl thought she was showing up to. What? What? What's wrong with it? It's just so, you know, it's just so... Is it pink? Yeah, it's so yeah. pink. Yeah, it's yeah. so out there. It's so, look at me. Yeah. I'm at the Barstool Classic. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. Yeah. too much. And it's what's funny is it's funny for us, and I bet you it would be funny for people online, like, afterwards, to, like, see you reenact Sharpay Evans on the golf course scenes on the golf course. That's what we were planning on doing, by the way, everyone. Um, however, which we can obviously still do. Fran and How, I are shooting the entire High School Musical 2. <laughs> basically, start to finish, we will be shooting High School Musical 2. Um, but the... Yeah, the actual eyeballs you would have to deal with there probably not worth it that's what i'm saying like i don't want to piss people off that are trying to really take this shit seriously and we're like fist bumping and jumping yeah and i'm jumping around screaming bet on it yeah yeah which honestly sucks because i know zach efron and that is like in a full um, he's like wearing like all black or something he is in all black and my dress is black yeah my dress is all black just saying oh no oh friend friend wants to be zach well she would be sharpay like like I'm if I'm I were thinking, to wear my outfit, yes. Like, but I'm uh, I'm thinking uh, we're reenacting uh, like the driving range when she's like Troy, he yeah. needs to help her with the golf swing, and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something uh, to ponder. Yeah. I have to think about this, but <laughs> maybe, I actually maybe don't even think I wear it anyway because my cheeks are out. So we'll yeah, we can't have issue. your cheeks out on the course. Hey everybody, hey golfers, yeah, no, free peek at the no, cheeks. No cheeks on the course. I don't think everybody Greg's line would up. appreciate Everybody that. line up to see Rhea's cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, there's too much bending over in golf. I feel that will not fly. <laughs> oh, hey, you need Oops. your ball. <laughs> Oops. That's five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get into oh, the topics. Man. Okay. Inappropriate inappropriate topics topics time it Topic is train. topics time what's the top what's what's that from what topics train right. topics train. the topics train it's like a song what is it the girl the girl on the bus topic train woo, woo. topic train woo, woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, am i making this up no topic train nothing came up when i googled that oh this is what i wanted to bring up I finally remembered. Thank you to everybody 
who helped me fix my Google Yahoo issue. Oh, yes. Thank you so much to all the people who messaged me. I fixed it. I will let everybody seem to have, not everybody, but a lot of people seem to have a similar problem. C100. And the topic train is yes. C100. We're all yes. over the place right now. All but I would like to say that if you are having trouble with the same issue, because a lot of people DM me, you know, my I kept going to to google and it would transfer me back to yahoo yeah. apparently it's some sort of virus i haven't figured that part out yet but here's how you can fix it you go into your chrome settings click on advanced settings at the bottom scroll to the bottom again and click restore settings to the original default then reset settings exit your browser restart your computer and then it should be fixed and it worked for me so there you go for the people who Shout are struggling out to our Techie listeners. They're great. We need more of you guys in our lives. We are not techie enough. No, we aren't. And I had so many people message me in capital letters being like, oh, I'm dealing with the same issue. It's yeah. so annoying. And so there you go. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Topics. Greg T's topic train. That's what I was thinking of. Z100. Z uh, Elvis Duran. Elvis Duran in the morning show? Uh-huh. <laughs> Greg T's... Right? Was it Greg? No, it's... It says Greg T's topic yeah, train. Yeah, yeah. Greg T's topic train. That's how it goes. It's like a little jingle. Oh, okay. Came right into my head. I don't, I don't remember know how that I one. never I thought remember... about that. Every time you've said, like, let's get into the topics, I don't know why today is the day when that popped in my head. We've done a bajillion podcast episodes. It's just the way the little people in your brain were working yeah. today. They said, let's... Yeah, they said, let's... let's, let's ha have her remember that. Mm -hmm. My little go. memory guy. Exactly. My, in your my noggin. little inside out like my little inside out guys up in here exactly yeah it's another movie i watched recently pretty good yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh was that war of the roses was that on z100 no i think that was um, that shit maybe was 95 feisty. 90 what's 92.3 90.3 92.3 90 is no longer 92.3 it used to it be used pop to be, now it's it like used rock. to be hit radio now it's yeah. alt Damn. alternative yeah yeah. Okay, let's get into the topics. It's a riveting conversation yeah. about New York radio. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> riveting. Let's get into the topics for today's episode. We got a sneak peek at Lily James and Sebastian Stan for their new show, Pam and Tommy, on Hulu. The Summer House Part 2 reunion aired on Thursday, so we'll talk about that. Miley Cyrus and Elon Musk were on Saturday Night Live. And a TikTok user blew up Matthew Perry's FaceTime. Yeah, and now... We're back talking about this. And we're back talking about people... <laughs> on Raya who yep. are getting their shit blown up yep. all over the internet. So let's get into it, starting off with Lily James and Sebastian Stan. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. <laughs> this important PSA is brought to you by Manscaped.com. This is the news that you guys have all been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you are up on your feet, jumping up and down for this breaking news from Manscaped. The Lawnmower 4.0 has officially been created and is now available for purchase in the USA and Canada. The new trimmer was literally just released moments ago like five seconds ago this was just released and you guys can be the first to get your hands on it listen do you think your guys balls are too hairy i don't know you let me know you guys are the <laughs> ones going down on him and not me i'm not seeing what your guys balls looks like but if you feel like he may need some manscaping then you can go to manscaped.com and use our code chicks to get 20 percent off and free shipping like I said, code chicks at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping. They got the lawnmower 4.0. Like I said, it gives you the ability to turn the 4,000 LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. So if you feel like your guy is not very handy and he may be cutting himself with whatever tool he's using, this has got an LED flashlight to help him out. This new trimmer even allows you to customize your trim all over through additional guard lengths, sizes one through four. So, you know, if they got a big old bush, they got something to take it down. If they got just a little bit of hair, they got something to take it down. So go to manscaped.com, use code CHICKS, and get 20% off the lawnmower 4.0. It's, it's waterproof. It's perfect. It's perfect, guys. Go get it. So Hulu's coming out with a new show called Pam and Tommy. It's about Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee. Lily James and Sebastian Stan are playing both yep. Pam and Tommy. At first, this casting was very Skeptical. confusing to everybody. Mm -hmm. I feel like we were like, wait, Lily James is Pamela Anderson? That yep. makes no sense. But they got to know what they're doing. 
And they did know what they were doing. The pictures were released and holy shit, they look incredible. Lily James looks exactly like Pamela Anderson. Fucking hot, the both of them. These pictures are insane. And now I am not a Sebastian Stan Stan, Stan. <laughs> but knew that was coming. <laughs> it seems like you stole my joke. <laughs> you didn't even let me hit my punchline. You didn't let me hit my punchline. Let me hit my fucking punchline, okay? Just right there. <laughs> I know you stole it from me. You stole it. Anyways, I'm feeling like this show's gonna make me one because he looks damn good as Tommy Lee. He really does. And you were right. We heard Lily James playing Pamela Anderson, and we were like, no. I don't see it. I don't get it. Friday, she posts this picture. Rhea, you texted me being like, is this her or is this Pam? Because I really can't tell. It's like freaking me out. It looks just like her. Um, We come to find out that it really is Lily James. And she looks so good. Like it's, she looks just like her. And I also think a lot of it has to do with the eyebrows. We talked about it. Like your eyebrows really make or break your face like you don't realize how much your face can change with a little shift in your eyebrows and Lily has beautiful you know kind of thicker eyebrows and so now she has the very skinny 90s skinny 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 eyebrows and it's she's a completely different person like you look at her and you're like that's an entirely and of course obviously she's blonde blonde hair and the makeup's different everything but the eyebrows is such a game changer like i'm just trying to imagine we got to find some kind of filter or something i bet it, it exists somewhere on snapchat or instagram or something of what we would look like with skinny 90s eyebrows because it would probably be terrifying i had them when i was younger so yeah but not not that skinny oh yeah oh franny i gotta break out the <laughs> pictures They're, pam anderson skinny fran i used to have the skinniest eyebrows because i've been getting my eyebrows waxed since yeah. i was fucking three years old because right? i have a crazy eyebrows yeah and that you bring up a such a good point eyebrows are the most important uh, yeah important, Ga- the most important the the gateway to the face they are i didn't even leave my apartment this weekend because my eyebrows aren't done <laughs> i have a hat on right now because my eyebrows aren't done i won't let anybody see them because they are terrifying when they are not shaped the way they should be it changes the entire yeah. face changes the whole thing and it really did for for lily james she looks unbelievable i cannot wait for this show to come out i am very curious though as to how pam and tommy feel in real life because they did not even show pamela anderson and tommy lee in the dirt movie yeah and that was something that tommy lee was actually involved in and pam did not want to be involved yeah so i don't know how the two of them feel about this show and i right. would love to find out and maybe we can find yeah, out yeah. because we have brandon lee coming yeah. on the show yeah. this week i was gonna so say maybe we just we so happen to have their child yeah. coming uh that we can talk to in real life no it's it's very interesting the eyebrows it is a funny thing I I just have a distinct memory growing up of my great uncle it's my Mima's brother and he every time I would see him when he when I was little he would just always be like your eyebrows they're amazing <laughs> like never touch them like they're st- yeah. amazing like very similar to like uh, fucking Paolo and Princess Diaries, like yeah. the uh, the eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, and I don't know why that stuck with me like my whole life, but just from him being like your eyebrows, like never touch them, like I, it's crazy. You do have great eyebrows, and you've never touched them. I don't. I pluck them, like I when I get hairs. Lucky. I I tweeze them around, but other than that, I don't really. I've never gotten them waxed lucky and every time i think like oh should i do one of these hot trendy like things that people do to their eyebrows and then i'm like why am i even considering this don't because because i know like i can't have the first thing i do to them be like a drastic change i'll hate my face yeah don't don't touch your eyebrows they're perfect you're beautiful you don't have to do anything to them (laughs) i'm trying to find a picture of my eyebrows when they were super i would love to i would love to see that but no sebastian stan i'm excited for too because i think a lot of people um are seeing him a lot more in these more i guess serious roles you could say i think a lot of people like still think about him from gossip girl which i do all the time and then you know marvel falcon and the winter soldier he's just in and people like really took off loving him and now he's playing tommy lee so this isn't as skinny as they were but it's the only picture i can find on my instagram where they're 
kind of skinny. Yeah. Also, I've really grown into my face. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're really skinny. Really skinny. I've really grown into my nose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody grows into their nose, though, you know? Especially us yeah. uh, But your Italians. nose and ears are the only thing that keep growing your Which whole is life. crazy yeah. because people, if they saw this picture, they would say, I got a nose job. Right. Probably. Because that's crazy. No, but also what because your that? eyebrows are so skinny, like it makes yes, your features the eyebrows. look smaller. That's what it is, the eyebrows. That was 2013. Like it makes your it like face look more center mm -hmm. on your actual face. Eyebrows changes everything. They, re they, they really do. But I... It was like jaw on the floor when we saw these pictures. I can't wait for this to, co to come I, out. Didn't realize Seth Rogen is in it. Oh, yeah, neither did I. But I sent it to you, and I thought that the pic of just her is yeah. what I was talking about. The other pic, I thought was an old picture of her biting of, the nipple piercing. I thought piercing. that was just like that, like the real no. Tommy yeah, Lynn. They're, Straight they, up, they nailed it. They, they did. There's a side-by-side awesome. side of that photo. That photo actually exists the in real life. The photo does exist, yeah. And it's insane. The, the mannerisms, it seems yeah. like Sebastian Stan nailed that with Tommy Lee. I'm actually, I'm really curious to see their thoughts on it because if you've heard Tommy Lee talk about Machine Gun Kelly in the dirt. Yeah. He really praises it, right? his performance. Yeah. He said, you know, as soon as, because they were kind of friendly before that happened. And right. so Machine Gun Kelly called Tommy Lee up and was like, I'm playing you. I'm coming over right now and I want to go through every single thing with you. And I want to know if it happened, if it didn't happen, how it happened. And so he thought Machine Gun Kelly absolutely nailed him in the movie. Yeah. Now, what is he going to think of this guy playing him when they have... I'm right. assuming no contact because right. I feel like we would hear about Tommy Lee and Pamela Anderson being involved and we haven't heard anything of the sort. I checked their, I checked Tommy Lee's Instagram to see if he was posting about it. Cause I'm like, is he talking and it, about this And it is all? coming out so relatively recent compared to like the dirt didn't come out that long ago. No, you know, the dirt like was it's pretty recent. And yeah. you know, Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox would have been awesome as Tommy and Pam. That, they would have been so good. Yeah. Imagine Megan Fox, big blonde hair, Pamela yeah. Anderson, yeah. she could play that, no doubt. And because Megan also had those, Megan had the very tiny eyebrows for a long time, too. Yeah. Has also. Megan Fox ever had, like, blonde hair? I, feel like I don't that'd think be so. Crazy. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, for a movie or anything. I don't think so. I just typed it in. Like, I feel like she had light brown hair at some point, but never yeah. blonde. Never so. blonde. Yeah. Never blonde. You know what? Good she's for so her. She's so not a blonde, though. No, she's so not. And I feel like, it, and when you just know that, she's yeah. like, I'm a dark haired bitch. Because yeah, I got the sure. black hair, blue 100%. eyes. 100%. Looks 100%. awesome. 100%. Always pops. Always. I cannot wait until the show comes out because I think that they're both fascinating human beings. Yep. And I think their relationship is fascinating. And, and like and you said, we didn't see their relationship on the in the dirt. No, so like, this is a missing piece. And it's something that we obviously didn't live through, but yeah. so many people remember them when they were so famous and like yeah. the most famous couple in the world. And yeah. obviously I think, you know, Seth Rogen's playing the guy who gets the sex tape mm -hmm. and that whole thing will be super skeevy and interesting. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited for this. I think it's going to be, now that we're seeing the pictures, I think it's going to be really good. I hope it's not, I know that some points are going to be really cheesy. For sure. Because you, you can't help that. But I hope that they do it justice for however they envision themselves. Yeah. Like you said, we have no idea how Pam and Tommy actually feel about this. Yeah. And and there's no date on it yet, so we don't know when this exactly will be coming out. But it, it, it seems like it might be a while because I feel like we just saw... I remember early last week, there were all these articles like, first look at Lily James as Pamela Anderson. Um, and they were, you know, photos from her on set. So I think they're still filming or whatever, so I bet you it might be a, towards the end of the year. Definitely. I'm excited, though, either way. Me too. Part two of the Summer House reunion aired Thursday night, which concludes Summer House for this season. It's yep. officially over. What will happen this summer? Who knows? Is Hannah going to come back? Are they going to be friends? A lot of shit went down, and I think from what we saw, we can all gather that Hannah did not have a great summer. Yeah. And the cast agrees with that. Yeah. And Luke also fucked up big time. Yeah. This whole reunion was one. It was great. Great. Like all around great reunion. Um, this season, I think many Bravo fans have agreed that this season was the best season of Summer House so far i think a lot you of people thought so? that yeah a lot of people thought that i saw what? a lot of polls and i kind of i mean i don't know there's just something that's m more 
of course, heightened when they actually are all stuck living together for six weeks compared to coming and going. Like, there was more ridiculous drama that felt super real because they were all actually, like, fed up with each other. This was probably my least favorite that I've seen. Really? Yeah. I liked... This is season five, right? I liked yeah. three and four a lot. Yeah. And this one, I I liked it, obviously, of course, but not my favorite. Yeah. The, um, I want, I really liked this past season just because there was, I feel like a different dynamic and I really liked, um, what who, I really liked Sierra. I feel like she was like a oh, yeah. very good addition when some of the, like three and, f- three and four, the extra jewels guys like it was like oh my god you know just kind of like weird vibes everybody got together really well here but the reunion it's just like when you watch it happen and of course we watched this after we talked to hannah and Paige. so seeing hannah and kyle interact it just doesn't feel like those two are ever really going to get along it just because you know hannah admitted like hey i hold grudges and when I see Kyle, like the old shit still comes up in me and they and I think Kyle's kind of like the same way. They both want to claim that they're all, oh, you know, forgive and forget, but they're just not. They cling on to these things and hold on to it. And it's hard because we like Hannah a lot watching this. It's very clear that she gets very defensive and 100 percent. Everybody was coming for her like there wasn't like. It wasn't like, oh, just one person. It was it was Danielle. It was Carl. It was Amanda. It was Kyle. It was Lindsay. Luke. Like, they all have their own problems with her. And at certain points in the reunion, they're all, like, yelling at her, having little points digging into her at certain points. And so she kind of lost it. And instead of having, like, a moment of, like, you know what? I really acknowledge that I, I had a tough summer. I'm really, really sorry. Like, I just want to move forward. It was, like always I'm sorry that happened but and then going back and like hitting them back again and you can't win in that situation like at one point Paige was like just apologize like just let it go and she was really emotional and was crying it was like look like I everybody's coming at me I get very defensive which is where that's where the problem is like because then when she gets super defensive it blows up into like this much bigger thing because she goes back either like the same or like harder than the people coming at her and it's just like there's no way to resolve anything when they're all arguing that way I think for everybody else she'll be fine with but Kyle I just don't think they're like ever going to be able to be normal yeah this whole thing was tough obviously you know like you said, the the defensiveness, nobody being able to say they're wrong, Hannah not being able to say she's wrong. Kyle, by the way, can't really do Kyle, that Kyle, yeah, no, that's <laughs> the thing. Like, obviously, Hannah has a huge problem with doing that, yeah. but also Kyle does too. Kyle and I definitely feel like, has an alpha complex, yeah, 100% definitely. also. Like, Hannah's 100% right that I think Kyle thinks he, like, runs the house and can decide, like, what everybody does and doesn't do. Right, and... I think that I mentioned this the last time we talked about this and it's like, yes, somebody can be wrong, but then when everybody is screaming at one person, of course that person is going to break down and cry. Like, and when everyone's coming at you and you're, I just feel like that's, I don't, I don't know how people are missing that point. Like a lot of people are just like blowing past that being like, well, she was wrong. And it's like, okay, yes, but the screaming five people screaming at once at one person like can obviously make that person upset yeah no doubt about it I think I referenced that to the bachelor when I forgot who it was that we were all like that person was wrong Sarah yeah, yeah. Sarah we were like she was wrong but then everyone started screaming at her and it was like okay yeah, yeah. all right she yeah. was wrong she was but wrong. let's just relax here so th- it's it's one of those things where you just say why can't everyone get along you know like are these <laughs> yeah. things really that bad to hold these grudges is it really that much to be like you know, that's what I, that's what I'm not getting from this is that why can't Hannah and and Kyle both be like, OK, we both did things wrong. We both pissed each other off. We both were wrong. We both said things that were fucked up. And yes, but let's just move past it, because why? 
Yeah. Why? Why are we going to keep fighting with each other? What's the fucking point? Seriously, what's yeah. the point of not like like really hating somebody like that and especially outwardly when fighting you're, with them? Like, right, especially when you're so-called such good friends with Amanda. And exactly. It's, and But here's the thing, too. And I think a lot of this like breaks the whatever, breaks the fourth wall, as they say. For Kyle... And like Lindsay, who had been on the show from the beginning, like Lindsay in the reun- reun- in the reunion was like, the whole premise of this show is friends being together, real life friends in the summer, hanging out, and that's you know obviously how it all started. When you bring in people li- into later seasons who didn't initially have that connection, they're gonna feel differently about the show. Like, Hannah and Paige are going to feel differently about the show. They didn't start from the beginning, and they haven't been friends with all of these guys for so long when, like, you know, Kyle, Carl, Lindsay, they've all, Danielle, they've all known each other for years. And so they, like, go into the show. It's their friends. They're filming it. And they, it sometimes, I think, take things really, really seriously because it's, like, if Hannah says anything about, you know, the dynamic on the show and he only wants to be he only cares about what people he, he, that triggers Kyle cuz he's like this is this is my life these are my friends like this is really like everything cuz he's just been doing it for a lo- I just think they have different viewpoints on like what the show is you know yeah that i get makes what sense. you're saying like i just think like hannah has like hannah came in not i do kind of connected understand connected to all these yeah. people as much as as much as they're claiming because Lindsay went at Hannah too about um I think Hannah had said that you know they're only friends she's only friends with him because of the show or things like that I forget what exactly it was right I think that though I understand where like Lindsay and Kyle are coming from in the way that they're like we were here first and this was our thing and you guys came in because to compare it to just real life, to give an example, here at Barcel, there are people who have been here for a really long time, right? Like when you look at Big Cat and yeah. Dave and obviously and KFC and the, and those people, and then you see new people come in and the way that they treat them or think, yeah. you know, they're, or you know what, you know, you get what yeah, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to say. Yeah. You're going to be like, well, that's fucking Big Cat. Like, he, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's people who have leverage because For of sure. being there sooner. And For sure. so I kind of understand that, but maybe it's not coming across the right way. It's, yeah. But it's coming yeah. across like, I'm better than you. Yeah. And that's that, where yeah. you can just kind of explain it as like, listen, we were here. This was our thing. You guys joined. You yeah. need to understand that this was kind of our dynamic. Yeah. And you guys were brought into it. That I understand. I just think like it's so. I understand because it's a reality show you're going to have people fighting that's why it's good TV and Mm -hmm. that's why people watch but when's the last time you have actually fought with somebody in real life like a friend you fought with them and you're yelling at each other and you guys are like seriously not talking I I really like never I've gotten I've gotten into maybe a handful of of actual arguments with some of my closest friends and they've either been drunk (laughs) or like in high school you know like like after the last time i remember is in high school yeah i can't see myself getting into like an actual fight like this in real life but i think it's because it's the show it's the dynamic they're not really friends they're not really friends they keep saying they're not really friends yeah so yeah and like i said i think that at the start, it's like you paint the image of, oh, we're all best friends, we're all best friends, we're all best friends. And then when things kind of get a little rocky, it's like, well, let's tell the truth here. Like, we haven't really known each other that long. <laughs> and it's it's a different um, kind of feel. Uh, of course, some of them are way more, way more connected. And you can tell, like, Hannah and Paige are truly real life best friends. And it's the same with Lindsay and Danielle. And you can see like that connection, right? Like Danielle's the only person in the world that could say to Lindsay, like, no, you're, you're wrong. Like in like the last episodes when they were like talking about Steven, it was like, am I like the one messing up here? And Danielle was like, yeah, like it, it's you. <laughs> like I, yeah. I mean, you, you have those friends who are able to say that to you. And like Danielle saying that to Lindsay, 100%, she was like, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Like there was no argument. There was no fight. If like 
Paige said that to Lindsay, forget it. Would have been a like knockout brawl. Like you can't they they don't have that kind of relationship. So it's just the different dynamics and it's sad to see Amanda and Hannah kind of have this falling out and Hannah definitely did like Hannah didn't tell Amanda about the the engagement she found out online and then Amanda claims that she called Hannah afterwards um and wanted to talk to her and Hannah was like oh you know I, I I'll call you back Hannah never called her back they never got to talk about it they she never like Amanda like wanted to talked to her about this whole thing and Hannah never called her back because Hannah heard from Paige that Kyle was going around and saying you know it was a a, not a fake engagement but like you know it was all for the for the press and for the Mm -hmm. the showiness and all that and so she didn't want to talk to them she didn't want to talk to like but it was like because she was mad at Kyle it also was taken out on Amanda so Amanda was really sad, which just made Kyle even more angry. And it just like was a bad cycle. And Hannah acknowledged that that was like the wrong thing to do. You know, she shouldn't have done that. But I don't know. It, that, that you do kind of hope is maybe like Amanda and Hannah could talk about it. And, you know, from when we talked to Paige and Hannah, it did seem like maybe they could all work it out with Kyle. I don't really know what's going to happen there. But... And then the other crazy part was Luke. Luke straight up says, hey, Hannah, got to break this to you. Breaking the fourth wall here. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, Andy. (laughs) But when I asked you to go to Minnesota, I only did that because the producers asked me to. And everyone was like, oh, God, come on, Luke. Like, even Andy Cohen was like, Luke. That didn't happen. Like, he was talking to him like a child. He was like, no, Luke, stop. Hannah gets up. She's sobbing. She's crying in the dressing room. She's like, that's the meanest thing a guy's ever said to me. And then, like, Luke got up and tried to go backstage and hug her and apologize to her. It was bullshit. Like, why even bring that up? It's so mean to have that relationship in real life, which I really think they did. Like, Hannah's not making up that they talk to each other every day. And then for him to be like, oh, by the way, that really genuine moment where I invited you to meet my family was fake. I didn't mean any of it. I was told to do it. Like, that's so mean. So So mean. mean. Really mean. Oh, I can't even imagine. I can't believe he even said that. Out I loud really at the reunion on that. camera. That's something you that you just got to keep inside. You don't share that you at don't. all. Even if it's true, just keep that in. That sounds fucked up, but oh my God, you cannot you cannot tell somebody that the producers were like, yeah, you got to get her to meet your yeah. family. And you also and know you, Andy was like, you, you got to be fucking kidding me. Like, right. So we're not like, about to start talking about what the producers are telling. Ta- because you know that that's definitely happening where like producers are definitely saying things to some of them, but we can't be talking talking about it on the reunion <laughs> no that's not how this works out of pocket luke really just really just crazy yeah i and it was so crazy that clearly they felt it was worth keeping in the reunion because it was like obviously. such a visceral reaction from hannah that they had to do it but oh my god that fucked up fucking sucks. I, and like even every everyone sitting down was like oh, okay like that's fucked up yeah. come on and that's how you know that like they're just blatantly calling out shit that's wrong because if they really, you know, if all the shit they were making up, if they were making up all the shit about Hannah, and if Luke said that, they would be like, yep, yeah. you know, yeah, Luke, he did that. But they can call out that Luke doing that to yeah. Hannah, even if they don't like Hannah, is fucked up. Right. It was like a collective, ah, from like everyone. I'm like, yeah. oh, come on, dude. It's really, really tough scenes. You're going to like slap her in the face with that, like this moment that she thought was like so nice and and you're just like oh yeah you know tough listen i really like amanda so as do i i'm rooting for i guess hannah and kyle to just throw the i don't know why they can't i know it sounds crazy but i just don't understand why the two of them can't just be like hey and joke around about it you know maybe they'll get there but like i think they're just two people that really hold grudges like i just hannah straight up said like i can't like Talk, she tries to like talk to Kyle and forget, but then the things that Kyle has said during the past come back, and she gets pissed off again. I guess. I mean, I guess that happens. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, I, I can't understand it. I know. I know. <laughs> but, I know. And you would think that, you know, for the sake of 
keeping the dynamic or like having Hannah and Amanda get along and also for like Paige's sake you know Mm -hmm. like if my best friend is stuck in the middle of this I would feel awful where I'd be like you know I'm gonna try my hardest to get along with Amanda or at least make it up because this is really putting like Paige in a tough spot Mm -hmm. because it's like she you know weddings weddings coming up bridesmaids like things or that she kind of has to like separate these two people in her life that didn't used to have to be separate yeah sucks we'll see what happens yeah if, if hannah comes back this season i mean next season this summer I, I hope so because i really think she had a tough tough season and like that wasn't really how she is and i think people you know loved her so much at the beginning that it went like from way up here to like like two extremes Mm -hmm. where she's got to find like a a middle ground which is what I think would happen if 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 she came back and I don't know what would happen like if that would mean Des would would be with her or not with her or or what but I mean Paige was Paige was like look they're just like she found her fellow weirdo like your person is like the person you can be your weirdest self with that's right and we, and checks out. other people may not understand it yeah but. yeah no I think it works and I do really I do really hope Hannah comes back because I without Hannah I the whole show the whole dynamic of the show changes massively yeah I think she needs to come back I, yeah. don't, I don't think they can end on this note I would be really sad needs if, a redemption if that, yeah for sure like what would what would they even do I don't know it would just be so weird if she wasn't there. Right. So it would, weird. It would just be awkward with Paige being there. Yeah. And then, like, I don't know. The whole thing would be so bizarre. So I really do hope she comes back. Something that is so important that we always kind of brush off or forget about is protecting ourselves, especially when you live in a big city. We're in New York. We are out on the streets. We're by ourselves. We're going for walks. You know, Rhea, she's, she's got a dog. She's walking Norman in the dark. You know, you want to make sure that you stay safe. So protecting ourselves is up there. You got to take it as your number one priority. And the people at Taser believe that safer self-defense is better self-defense, which is why Rhea and I both love our Taser Strike Light are the Taser Strike Light is a rechargeable, high-powered flashlight that can repel an attacker through its electric stun feature. It combines a flashlight and a stun gun into one, which is amazing because you hold it in your hand, it looks like a flashlight. Other people are going to think it's a flashlight. And I don't know why you wouldn't combine these two things. You know, the flashlight feature is such a good first step. It's so bright. You shine that thing in someone's eyes. It's blinding. We've done it to Noah by accident before he can attest. It was very bright. Um, And when that doesn't work, it also has the stun gun feature. So the Taser Strike Light is a non-lethal self-protection device that is small, lightweight. You can put it in your glove compartment. You can keep it in your purse. Because, you know, sometimes you don't want to go the full extreme where... Um, you, you feel like you need something crazy on you or you don't, you know, maybe pepper spray doesn't feel like it's enough. This is a perfect in between the taser strike light is safer and easy to use you. So you can protect yourself and your family with taser strike light, self defense product taser strike light is available without a permit in most U S states. You can get the taser strike light at taser.com with promo code chicks and save 15% now at taser.com promo code chicks spelled t-a-s-e-r dot com promo code chicks restrictions apply see site for full details the moment we were all waiting for saturday night live elon musk miley cyrus um i did tune in live and then i turned it off after (laughs) miley's first performance one because one i really wanted to see miley uh she sounded great she, her first performance she did without you with uh the kid Leroy, and there's just something this is totally like just to do with K- the kid Leroy. one because you we all know i didn't even know who that was <laughs> yeah um i remember i thought it was kid lacroix i said kid cardi right i was like that's right <laughs> you thought weird. it was kid cardi kid and you cardi. thought it was the kid lacroix kid lacroix um he y'all looking are fucking at, chuggy yeah yeah big time i looked at at this child on stage and was like this is him (laughs) i was like shh 
blown away. There's something about the. Oh my God, he's legit seventeen. He's seventeen oh, really? years old. I didn't fucking know that. seventeen. Like I think there's been so many people being like, ah, oh, like is there something going on he's with Miley, Miley the kid and the kid Leroy? I'm like, the kid Leroy is underage, so <laughs> he's actually a kid. Um, and probably you know I, nothing's going on. Imagine actually, being with Miley Cyrus. seventeen and you're just like best friends with Miley Cyrus. No, it's awesome. I think he's this song blew up. So I mean, good so for him. many people like but that. Olivia like, Rodrigo. Yeah, Billie that. Eilish. And I mean, Olivia Rodrigo's host is on the musical guest on SNL next week. But yeah. the um, Charlie D'Amelio. Yeah, the. <laughs> no, but just I mean, like, like as a, especially as a guy, just like you're just hanging out with Miley Cyrus like nonstop, like at a seventeen. Year old. Yeah, he might yeah. not even like really. Yeah. Like he was too young to watch Hannah Montana. Like I don't For even sure. know. <laughs> he was born in 2003. He was born in 2003. That's He's also Australian. Um, I googled. He is? I, yeah, I googled France him the after. World's biggest World, I've, kid Leroy I've, fan. I read the first two paragraphs of his Wikipedia after I looked this kid in the face on he the. A, he has a good voice. He kind of sounds like Post Malone. When no, I read he it. has like that punky voice that you just can't tell what the person looks like. Like there's so many more kids like that kind of sound i feel like is coming back where it's like i this kid could be 30 he could be 17 i have no idea he's got the face of justin bieber like they have very similar faces i feel like he's got but he's got the you know floppy hair tiktok hair and it's the same thing with like Jaden, like tiktok uh, Jaden hosser you hear Jaden's voice and it's like they have that same thing and then you look at their face and you're like this is you <laughs> singing this song so the performance was great I like the kid Leroy. Um, I say like sounding like a fucking grandma, but I say I literally sound like Elon Musk. Like they laughed when Elon Musk introduced them. Elon Musk was like, "And ladies and gentlemen, Miley Cyrus and the kid Leroy." <laughs> you like they both looked at each other for a split second before they started singing and like kind of laughed. And I was like, "That's literally me." Can we talk about the outrage that was Elon Musk going on Saturday Night Live from the cast members of Saturday so Night Live? AD One Bri- of the most absurd things that AD I've been Bryant hearing about. Didn't uh, AD, apparently AD Bryant didn't do like any of the sketches that Elon was in. Like why? I'm so confused. I'm so confused like, as well what, because what I feel her? like but she did film pre film like the pre recorded ones. She was in some of them, so I don't know. I. I saw headlines like Saturday Night Live was creating safe spaces for the people that don't want to be near Elon Musk. I'm just so confused because it's not I, you like know, they don't know, have rich ass people host the show right, every, and I, I, <laughs> every week. Like, and, every week. And you know that like Elon Musk, yeah, weird guy. Yeah. But like, I did feel they do like this when Trump came on? I don't even think like anyone said anything. I don't like, know. Did Trump go on while yeah. he was president? No, he, when he was running no, for no, president. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm just I it's just kind of mind boggling because you're like, well, what did Elon Musk do so wrong for these people to want to be in safe spaces around Elon Musk? Because then why? Like if Elon Musk was that bad, why is he even on the show? Why is Miley Cyrus hanging out with Elon Musk? Like extreme wealth. It's really weird. Someone I was listening to. Eddie Bryant put up like a Bernie Sanders quote about it on her Instagram story. I don't know. Dave Chappelle and Joe Rogan were talking about it and he said it might have been like some comments he made about COVID and like kind of downplaying it. But I don't even know. That seems like. Well, uh, Elon Elon Musk is definitely fairly controversial, I would say, but not like to the point where people are afraid to be around. Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest, I was very, I had no idea how this was going to go for him. Um, or how he would be on camera. His monologue was not that bad. Like they were, they were very cheesy. I thought the O.J. Simpson joke was funny. The O.J. Simpson joke was funny. I like they were, out loud. I he, like, oh, shit. they did a good job writing jokes for him to deliver, and like they were just corny enough where it was like, oh, good one. Like they, 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 it wasn't sophisticated humor. It was yeah. very kind of like low level ha ha but you would still laugh which like, is basically all of saturday night live yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, even well. the sketches like even if the sketches weren't good like he he was like fully invested no, he, in re- like, he, he, he like, like went all in yeah he definitely did um but right off the bat like the it went right into like a gen z uh s- sketch and like the language was funny but it's just i don't know what it is i don't get it I don't get what the disconnect is because these people individually are like so talented and so funny. Like when you go to some of these guys like Instagrams and see like what they're posting on their own, it's hilarious. But somehow it just like doesn't translate on the show as much. 
that first one I th- was I thought was so cringy. The COVID, like socializing after COVID, I thought was actually very funny. I la- <laughs> that one I laughed. But then there's like weird Icelandic game show, a uh, Icelandic talk show host sketch that just made no sense just wasn't funny and and i'm the one who still laughs at a majority of saturday night live so i don't know i like i said i i definitely wanted to see where elon went with it and i wanted to see how his monologue went um and then i made it to miley and then i was tired and went to sleep and was like i can't do the rest of this well well you know how i feel about saturday night yeah live. yeah i yeah. think saturday night, Li- night live is so tough to watch good mayor of east town i will yeah, say there was that a spoof, was a good like a uh, kate sketch. mckinnon kate mckinnon's is cannot do wrong like i think she's still the best one on that show so yeah i just feel like saturday night live i think was really really funny at one point obviously you know one of the biggest shows ever and it has just gone downhill so much it's so hard to watch yeah there is some shit that is funny obviously most of it's really cringeworthy all of the people on the show are incredibly talented. I'm not saying that they're not funny people. They're they're, they're very funny so comedians, funny. very funny writers. They're all so good in their own right. Yeah. But collectively as a show, it's not working. Obviously, it's still going to be one of those things where it's like, wow, you're going on SNL. That's huge. Yeah. Olivia Rodrigo performing on SNL at the age that she's doing. Yeah. Such an iconic show. Still such a great thing to do. I like the weekend and update. And yeah, but but yeah, that's Until the whole thing. Everyone on, like, says a yeah. weird character. Yeah. <laughs> well, everyone yeah. says, oh, the weekend update. Well, what about the rest of the hour show before the weekend update? No, because yeah, yeah. it's yeah. really tough to watch. It's like, oh my god, who are they catering to? What crowd are they? Ca- they don't know. They do not know what crowd they are catering to. They have no yeah. idea where they're marketing. It's it's insane. But right. the, the I opening think, the opening sketch being this tiktok one was tough really tough yeah but i think that elon musk obviously he's a big name like the ratings were very up huge huge because people want to know what this guy's gonna do he's a weird freak he's a freak but he's captivating and you want to know what's happening i just can't get over the people that are like ha- wanted to hide from elon musk it makes no sense to me it's like yeah. he, brought also, his, he brought his mom on the show she seemed like a very classy lady like yeah. she was a very I didn't realize that older he, he had Asperger's either. So that was cool. He's like the first host. Yeah, he ever said that, that, but that was wrong. What? He said that he was the first Oh, someone host. Had, someone already did. He said he was the first guy to host SNL with Asperger's. Yeah. I but apparently that was fact checked and Dan Aykroyd actually had uh, Asperger's uh. as well. Mm-hmm. So not to- yeah, not yeah. correct. But um and I don't really know if that was even public knowledge. Yeah, I didn't know. Like, I think that was, like, his first time ever saying that Yeah, out I didn't loud. know that. Yeah, like, I don't think I don't think he's shared that publicly. I maybe wouldn't have called him weird so many times if <laughs> I knew that, you know? Well, this is the first time he ever really... We didn't know this about him yeah. until, My, until his mom um, block. It was... Um, he was able to throw it in there in, in, a, in a moment, where, which was nice because... I think a lot of times people love a monologue where you the person is sharing parts of their life. Like it's not just joke after joke after joke that's like outside yeah. world jokes. When you can put yourself into it, it works really well. And it, it what self-deprecating humor it always plays, which is kind of where it was like, oh, Elon, let's you know make fun of yourself and whatever, and people will laugh. Um, and then also just share a little bit more like he made fun of his kid's name like he laughed at things that you know everybody laughs at he's like by the way this big thing but i did see this morning that um it was trending on twitter because everyone was like that's not the actual he did say first like time he yeah said, so like, i'm at least the first one to admit right 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 yeah. so it's uh, actually still trending but it said original SNL cast member Dan Aykroyd was the first person with Asperger's to host a show despite a claim made in Elon Musk opening mo- monologue. Um, people were tweeting like, LOL, Dan Aykroyd started SNL with Asperger's, but nice try. Uh, was one of the original cast members on the on the show. So that blew up when he said that. So it was kind of like a, it sucks because I feel like that was a big moment and him talking about that. But then claiming to be the first one, everyone is, it's weird is talking that, about that. It's like, weird it was that, like, well, you were wrong about that. It's weird Lauren yeah. Michaels or someone wouldn't have been like, no, someone already did like 
Right, and it's also not like it was like, A, this random host from like 1992 had Asperger's. Mm -hmm. It was like, no, it was Dan Aykroyd who was started as Saturday Night Live. (laughs) Like, was one of the first people on the show. Maybe like he wasn't that open about, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So. I didn't know Jerry Seinfeld had Asperger's. Really? Does he? That's, I looked, it says famous people that have Asperger's and Jerry Seinfeld is on the list. Tim Burton. Bill Gates. Yeah. Oh, I guess in an interview from 2014, Jerry said he does think that he is on the autism spectrum. But then he clarified it and said that he's not on the autism spectrum. Oh, so he was just throwing that out there maybe as like a joke. He said it like as a self-diagnosis. This was during a recent interview with NBC's Brian Williams this is from 2014. Jerry Seinfeld made a, made a comment about possibly being on the autism spectrum, but while his words were mere speculation, many on social media took him to task for what they considered a serious case of, quote, self-diagnosis. Now he wants to set the re- record straight. I don't have autism. I'm not on the spectrum. Um, that seems like a joke gone wrong. Like, he yeah. was like, I'm on the spectrum, and then everyone was like, well, you can't say you're on the spectrum yeah. if nobody yeah. told you you're on the spectrum. Yeah, you can't, like... All right, that's so not take a- Jerry Seinfeld <laughs> off the list. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my bad. They gave me a wrong list on Google. Yeah. You got to go back to having your search engine not work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well not work at all, just because then I just will get no answers. Go <laughs> Right. Well, either way, interesting, SNL, Miley's always a show. Miley's always fantastic and like Noah said the ratings were ginormous this was exactly what they wanted there I don't think I when I do turn on SNL I normally watch it like in the following days afterwards on Hulu and I did actually turn well, it on Elon to watch like, live you watch live really SNL is. on Hulu after it comes out sometimes depending on the host <laughs> like like the full show no I'll oh, skip around like, like I'll go on YouTube and like find like because they put out they, they, I know, but I normally, like, depending on the host, I'll normally watch the opening, the cold open, I'll watch the monologue, and yeah. if I like the musical performance, I'll skip around. It's easy yeah. on Hulu. I, if a sketch starts and I'm like, During I don't like Mother's this, Day I just fast forward. I knew that, like, I know they do that every year, but I'm like, everyone's watching for Elon, and it's like 10 minutes has yeah, gone by. Yeah, it went like, by, that was I very was like, long. come on. <laughs> we get it, you all love your moms. Yeah. <laughs> Last week, we talked about Ben Affleck on Raya. And right after that happened, another TikTok user, um, 19-year-old Kate Harrelson, called out Matthew Perry. She matched with Matthew Perry on Raya. And then he asked to FaceTime. And she had she had a recording of her computer while they were FaceTiming. They were playing 20 questions. It was very uncomfortable to watch. And this is blown up. Probably even more than the Ben Affleck one. Like, yes, the Ben Affleck, it blew up because it's Ben Affleck. But it wasn't like, there was no interaction. It was like, hey, Ben Affleck sent me this video. But it wasn't like a video of them talking. This felt more personal. It was like a, what Matthew Perry maybe thought was a private interaction um, that she put on blast. And it's... uh, just uncomfortable on both sides it's like Matthew Perry like uh, cringe uh, no and then from the girl side it's like okay now you're claiming to wanting to expose these Hollywood older men who go for these younger girls but like you're on Raya matching with these older guys like what are your settings like Like, you're on there looking like you are you match with him in the first place like I don't know what Right. Like, it's just, it's all very, very weird. And, you know, she was asked about the, the age range and she was like, ah, I was just, just joking around. Just, she set her age range to meet older men, quote, for the joke of it. Like, then. See, that's not then, really, That's mean. <laughs> yeah, that's mean. And that, to me, is just not right. I mean, yes, it is weird. If, yeah. You know, it's weird on both sides. Uh, Chrissy Teigen tweeted, I agree celebs shouldn't be making these creepy, desperate video replies on Raya, but it's tacky yeah. to release private messages. You're both wrong. Congrats. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Of course, Chrissy Teigen's got a comment about yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Now she's back on Twitter. But I think <laughs> that both... I'm glad she did because I think, I think, I think that, that sums it I up think pretty it nicely. Sums it up. It's like, okay, 
Matthew Perry, he's in his 50s. He's, you know, hooking up yeah. with 19-year-olds. It's like, why can't you get someone older? Right. But then for the 19-year-old, it's like, well, you are setting your matches to match with older men, but then you're saying it's a joke? What is what is a joke right. about that? I think she also tried to claim that, like, she had it set for older to, like, see what guys were on there for her mom and like, then that's forgot a lie. to turn it back. That's a lie. Yeah. That's yeah. a lie. That's yeah. just just a lie. You, you yeah. Call it what it is. You know what I mean? Like, there yeah. are... Well, she's been kicked off, Raya. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think she deserves to be because yeah. I think that there are some cases where younger women get, you know, into situations with older men and maybe they don't want to be in that situation and then it's hard for them to even talk about it because you got girls like this who are going out of their way yeah. to match with these older men and then being like, haha, it was a joke. I was trying to, you know, catch the predator. And it's yeah, like, yeah. well, were you or were you actually interested in in these men because if yeah. you're interested and it's consensual then fine yeah so it's really just wrong unfortunately it's still and, quite creepy and for matthew perry exactly like, and like matthew perry like there's the video he's like he made a joke like about being as old as her dad like it, oh, all around just really creepy. uncomfortable yeah but like you both of its both sides both of it like feels a, a wrong well it's icky. skeevy because yeah. yes Matthew Perry that is weird that is weird yeah. to make the joke yeah. you're going out of your way you, you seem desperate you can't you can't find anybody you can't find yeah. anybody around your age to meet in California wherever you are take them out on a nice date you're on a riot right. hooking up with and 19 year olds don't agree to like but then, don't agree to FaceTime with him too just, just to a clown on him, him. Yeah. yeah and now it's like uh, we talked about this last time where we talked about if you would release people's messages or whatever, because when we were right. talking about Tristan Thompson and the girl Sydney, and it's like, yeah. no, you know, like I just, I just, it's, it's mean. It, it, it feels weird when you are, if they were going out of their way to creep on you, yeah, you didn't match with them, you didn't go out of your way to connect with them. And they're like really sending you some scary messages and they're being really creepy. Okay, blow up their spot, right? Yeah. But right. when you're and like Matthew Perry matching was, with was this person, like a predator. Yeah, but if you're matching with but this person, going out of your way to FaceTime with them and yeah. then recording the FaceTime and putting it out there is right. just like for what for what reason? For just for followers? Yeah. Yeah. And she was just kind of saying, you know, like it's not right that he's talking to to younger girls she wrote a lot of people were saying i'm a bully a mean for posting this and it made me feel kind of bad but that at the same time i feel like a lot of guys in hollywood are talking to all these young girls and it's something that i think a lot of people should be aware of i get that but i also think that there was a part of this because you know this interaction was taken when she was 19 she's now 20 and i feel like she saw the ben affleck raya thing go viral for this girl on tiktok and was like well now i'm gonna go viral on tiktok you know like it was yeah. like oh i have oh remember i have that video from la like whatever however long it was ago and like i'm like oh i'm gonna post it now yeah i think that i think the ben affleck one was more funny right and kind of weird at the same time whereas this one because you feel you feel wrong in some way when you're yeah. like when this woman's saying that she's trying to out creepy old men in hollywood you're like yeah, you know, you don't want to be like, you don't want to... Right, like, should all these guys be trying to hit up 19-year-olds? Right. No. No, but you don't, but <laughs> you don't want to be like, oh, she's wrong for doing that because, yeah. of course, there are weird older men in Hollywood yeah. that should have their shit blown up. Yeah, yeah. But something about this whole situation just feels wrong. Right, it was like a, like a weird trap situation that, like, if you didn't, I don't know, I don't know. Using Raya for this purpose is not going to work out. <laughs> like, you know, being on there and being like, ah, like, I'm just going to match with these older guys and, and see what happens. Like, maybe just keep staying your age range. Age range is right. what I meant to say. Where you don't need to be like jacking it up just to see. What's, and if everybody everybody's curious you want that's what the whole point of the app is it's like oh my god these celebrities are on here let's let's turn the age range to 100 and just see who shows up uh which is fine like i think exploring and seeing who's on there is one thing but like you said matching 
interacting, getting on FaceTime, and then recording it is an extra step that you don't need to go. Yeah. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's episode. The next time you will hear from us, we'll be in L.A. Hopefully, we'll have a lot of fun things to talk about, and we're really excited, so we hope you guys are, too. We will talk to everybody on Wednesday. I love you. Bye.